Happy NFL Week 8, everyone winning in the shadows. Andy, Jim, and Corbin break down all of the props in all of the different categories. Go over some parlay pieces, some alternate plays. Jim will go over his sack props. Corbin, would you like to pick a four-letter word, or would you like me to uh, have have our, our friend the four-letter word generator? We'll go with the generator. What, what? All right, just tell me to stop. Tell me it to can't stop. be Lord after. Uh, yes. Stop. Host. There's a good one. All right, hit the, hit the like button and leave a comment. Tell us your best bet. For the uh, for for week eight, if you don't have a hot take for week eight, just type the word "host" in the comment section. Helps the algorithm out, helps us out. So uh, much appreciated. Uh, the, real quick on the weather, the only one that looks like it's going to have an effect is Buffalo and Seattle. It says periodic bands of heavy rain will push through. At times, the game will rain. At times, it'll be dry. Winds will pick up as the bands move for sustain. 10 to uh, 15 mile an hour winds. I will say it's the day before and they only have the yellow designation, which is not terrible. So I, I'm thinking that they're not too concerned. It's going to be that big of an issue. So, uh, but that seems to be about the only one uh, where we'll have, have some issues. So, all right, guys, let's get started here with passing props. Titans and the Lions. Corbin, any hot takes on the Titans and Lions here? Jared Goff, uh, Mason Rudolph? Yeah, I, I can't go with Goff just because I think it's going to be a huge blowout. Um, but I I will go with Rudolph's pass attempts. Uh, I was looking earlier, I think it was 32 and a half. We know the Lions are good versus the run. So if, if that takes away Pollard, then they, they really don't have much else to kind of hope for. Obviously, uh, no Hopkins anymore. They're kind of on a dumpster sale. Who knows where they're going, but it's, they're going down, basically. Uh, he had 40 last week versus the Bills, and they were down big in that game. I think 32.5 is quite a low number on a team that I expect to be behind early and quite big. So, How, What's the level on a scale 1 to 10 depression for Calvin Ridley? <laughs> <laughs> Minus 10. <laughs> just, just watched DeAndre Hopkins leave. Mason Rudolph's throwing him the ball. I mean, oh, God. You had to know going to that organization <laughs> that the quarterback play wasn't going to light the world on fire. <laughs> True. <laughs> uh, I like that attempt, Scorbin. I, I did not even think about that one. That is a real – I love that play. Mm -hmm. That's really good. Because you're right. Tony Pollard's not going to have much success. They're going to be able nope. to take that away. Uh, Jim, you got any take on the uh, quarterbacks for Titans-Lions? Uh, same game script as Corbin says. I'll take Rudolph to throw an interception at minus 155. It's borderline. It's playable. I think it happens. Um, I don't think they're going to turn to Levis if Rudolph is having a bad game here or whoever else is back there. You know, whether Levis is really injured or not or he's active or not, I think it's Rudolph's show. All right. Let's move on to the Ravens and the Browns. Yes. Jameis Winston's passing yards is higher than Lamar Jackson's. Holy, what in the world is going on here, Jim? Mm -hmm. well, I, I, I mean, if you would have told me who's going to have more passing yards, Lamar or Winston, I would have been like, Lamar, right? Right? Well, you, you have the Rashad Bateman injury. So... You mean Zay Flowers? Or, or Zay Flowers. So Rashad yeah. Bateman is going to be the guy. Okay. Uh, it does take away a weapon. Uh, look, this is the Browns with Nick Chubb and and Jameis Winston. This is a different team, guys. Um, this game has trap game written all over for me. I am not saying that I'll be putting money on Cleveland money line, but I think Winston lets the ball fly. <laughs> I really do. If they can't run, why not? They're just going to go for it. And you know, if my theory is correct, that Stefanski really did not want uh, Deshaun Watson and wanted to change him, and it was the owner's decision not to, then I think he's going to be a little excited to uh, prove that he was right. You know, uh, uh, send out Winston and let him rip. Fair enough. I mean, Corbin, I, this, the, the reason why that is is because <laughs> of Ravens are like the top two mm -hmm. rush defense and a bottom yeah. five pass defense. I guess that's it. Do you want any of these props, though? See, Jim just said Winston letting it go. What's the first thing that comes to mind when you where's, think about where's that? Where's that interception? It, 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 it is juicy. It's minus two twenty. Minus two twenty. But don't care. But, but I, I'm I'm still gonna play it. I, yeah. I, I, I'll put it with something. If he's gonna let it go at all, which mm -hmm. I think he is. You mentioned the Ravens have the good rush defense. Uh, Chubb had I think it was eleven carries last week and did like nothing with it. Unfortunately mm -hmm. for me, but. Uh, I think they're going to have huge times, 
few, huge issues running the ball. I think he's going to start throwing it. I think he. I I would love to know what one and a half interceptions is because I think he could quite easily throw two or three this game. Quite honestly. So yeah, I will be playing the minus two twenty with something. Uh, it's a great point because if you don't bet this before the game and you watch the game, this number is going to plummet every time he doesn't throw an interception. So you might be able to get this at, at minus mm. 150 if you trust Jameis to get out of two drives without an interception. I don't. <laughs> yeah, I mean, listen, the last time Jameis started was in uh, 2023, and he threw two. <laughs> yeah. I mean, just, so I, I, it's, it's an interesting way to look at it. I think there's uh, I think there's much better plays on the board. I will – I will happily pass on this one. Packers and the Jaguars. I will just tell you right now, Corbin, I love what your Packers uh, pass defense has been doing the last few weeks. I will take Trevor Lawrence under one and a half touchdown passes. Mm -hmm. Last three quarterbacks against uh, your Packers have only thrown one each game. And I, I was watching, I watched that last week because I, I had CJ Stroud to just throw one of them. And they just put the quarterback under so much pressure. And it was like, we, we understand we're, we're going to give up rushing yards. Like we get that. But when we get in, when you get in close, we're going to really tight down and we're going to put your quarterback under pressure whenever he drops back. Um, this is not exactly a quarterback that deals with pressure. Well, this isn't a team that deals with pressure. Well, I just, I, I like what I saw, what I've seen the last three weeks from, uh, from the Packers past defense. So I'm going to fade Trevor Lawrence and I'm going to do it with uh under one and a half touchdowns. What do you think, Corbin? Uh, I agree completely. I just went the other way. I went Trevor Lawrence under his passing yards completely. I think it's 237. He's yeah. cleared this in one game. It seems one high. Game. And, get, and guess which team that was against? It was against the Colts. Colts, who, yes. the one The one week <laughs> the one week that I took Trevor Lawrence to have an over was that week. You mentioned it. We have a bad rush defense, so I think they're gonna. I think they're gonna run the run the ball more. I think we're gonna take away any kind of passing game. Not that they have much to take away. Uh, the one main concern I have is the fact that I expect them to be down quite significantly. I think we're gonna have a field day versus them. So I was looking under. Um, Fangio actually has first quarter props. Mm. His passing total for the first quarter is 47 and a half. It seems awfully high. I think they're going to start off running the ball. I don't see him getting to that kind of total in the first quarter. So I kind of like that approach. Yeah. Uh, um, I don't know. Uh, Jim, you mentioned you might be looking here at Jordan Love over two and a half. Touchdowns, it's hard to argue that one. It's it's hard to argue against this defense. This this obviously means that the books have caught on to the Jacksonville secondary. We we saw had our stretch of seeing one and a half. So now we're we're crossing that bridge over to two and a half. So but it's the Packers. So I could see it and at plus one sixty five. If this was like I don't know, plus 110. There's no shot on betting it. But plus 165, I think, is a really good number. And I would not be shocked. I, I, would it shock anybody to see Jacksonville give up three touchdowns? It's the worst secondary in the league. It's pretty bad. Pretty bad. It's just it's a chance for, for Love to really go in there, let it fly again. And these receivers are on the same page with him. Tucker Craft has turned into a real weapon. And... I think that helps down in the red zone. I, what are they going to run Josh Jacobs into the, the strength of the defense for three times? No, they're uh, going to throw one to the end zone there during the goal line. I will I say, you could, oh, go, yeah, on, go ahead, go, go ahead, Corbin. I was going to say you could get love just to throw two as a uh, that was a parlay piece I was looking at minus mm. two twenty I think it is just to throw two I could quite easily put that and the Winston interception is an example that's of something a great you call could yeah put both of those together because I think he easily gets the two the two and a half I, I I'm not a fan of the two and a half on passing touchdowns but I I could quite easily see the two for Jordan so. I had to uh, drop somebody in my fantasy league and I had two tight ends I had Tucker Craft and Sam Laporta. See you, Sam. I dropped Sam Laporta. <laughs> and I bet he got picked him. up right away. No. Oh. No. Corbin, he's like the number 20 mm -hmm. tight end. He's I know, worthless. I know. And, and, and that's with, with that. He has a 52-yard touchdown catch <laughs> on his, his thing today. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm with you. All right, Colts and Texans. I'll just I, – for, for what it's worth – so C.J. Stroud's played well against the Colts. This no Nico Collins thing seems like it's really, really bothering him. Um, yeah. I, I – 
I, on paper, you look at this and you go, oh, C.J. Stroud should have a field day. He just hasn't looked right with Nico Collins. So I, I'm not betting against him. I'm just saying I would temper expectations. It's not a good defense, but 240 and a half feels like a lot. Two passing touchdowns feels like a lot. Um, Anthony Richardson under 188 and a half absolutely has my attention because Jonathan Taylor's back and Anthony Richardson cannot complete a pass to save his life. Um, I was looking at uh, completions here for Anthony Richardson, and uh, it's 16 and a half. God, that sounds ambitious. He had 10 last week. So I, I think Anthony Richardson under would be the way to go. But uh, Corbin, I'll see if you like anything in this one. But uh, my big my big thing is just don't, don't go all in on C.J. Stroud with a great matchup. Something's not right without Nico Collins there. Yeah. Everything you said is exactly what I was going to say. I have nice. Richardson under his uh, completions written down. Uh, you mentioned it, Taylor back, playing a divisional game. I don't see how he gets over this uh, this total. And then exactly, you nailed Stroud. I think he does have a good game, but it's it's not worth the risk considering what we've seen without Nico Collins. It's 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 just not the it's not the week to do it. So he misses him greatly, Jim. I don't like anything in this game. <clears throat> Perfect. Excuse me. Uh, passing. Yeah, move on. <laughs> we're Speaking recording of the this game. I want nothing to do with. Yeah, <laughs> we're recording this early Saturday morning, and Jim and I pretty much have the same weather, uh, which means we both have allergies. Yes. So <laughs> I'm sorry <laughs> if we would record this at one in the afternoon, we would both sound way better. So apologize. This if if I sound like a horror movie, just <laughs> <laughs> like I, I, Darth. What Vader are your props, has, Andy? <laughs> <laughs> Darth Vader has an easier time breathing this morning than I do. Uh, Jets and the Patriots, Jim. Uh, what do you think about Aaron Rodgers and, and the Jets here? Oh, I'd love Drake anyway. May over 206 and a half passing. You brought up a good point about injuries in the secondary. We Just are destroyed. Okay. Destroyed. I don't know who's playing or not, but whoever's playing is not healthy. Okay. That's, that's the sentiment around the organization right now. Um, Michael Carter had an ankle injury in preseason, and they flat out said he's going to be dealing with it all year. He's going to be in and out of the lineup. That's their number one slot receiver, uh, uh, cornerback. Sauce Gardner has taken some bad hits this year. He's been on and off the field throughout the games. He's gutting it out, but he doesn't look healthy, in my opinion. I really don't think so. We could be down both our starting safeties and a backup. It just the list goes on and on and on. DJ Reed is coming off an injury as well. So now we're looking at a third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh guy on a depth chart in a secondary on third down. Ashton Davis, a backup safety as a concussion. Um, I think Drake May could very easily go over this 206. I think it's going to be in a losing effort. I want no part of Aaron Rodgers at 238 and a half. His okay. knees, ankles, hip. What, what are we up to now? Wait, hamstring, <laughs> knee, ankle, and hip, I think, we've had over the past three weeks. Sounds like a retirement home medical <laughs> rehab <laughs> schedule. And this man is our quarterback. So I wouldn't be shocked to see him one hit take him out of the game at this point. I agree. I don't, I don't think he's healthy. I agree 100% with uh, Drake May. Corbin, you you're, you don't want anything. with. I want quarterback. nothing to do with this game or the Jets ever again this season. I, 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 I am after Devonte Adams had what was it three catches. I want I no no just but seven targets, Corbin. Seven targets. He he went he went over his uh, locker room speeches showing what a yes. leader he is. That that was that yes. was over half and uh, the over. Uh, Only half, some, not one and a half. Geez. No no, just half of inspirational <laughs> locker room speeches. What that? Uh, Corbin, I know your same game parlay is in this game, uh, so I'll go to yes. uh, Jim. Jalen Hurts, Joe Burrow. You're not a big Jalen Hurts guy, are you, Jim? Uh, something's up. Something's up with this team. Something's up with Jalen Hurts. He can throw the deep ball to anybody. It's great yeah. when you have fantastic receivers, but when it comes to playing the position of quarterback in the NFL, I don't see it. I just don't see it. it he's turned into an athlete. Um, just doing everything except reading defenses properly, putting the ball on the correct shoulder. I know the Cincinnati Bengals defense is not good, but man, I've seen, we've just seen what two, three, four bonehead plays from Jalen hurts a game at this point. 
Yeah. It's, so it's they very easily could result in turnovers. Uh, I'd be interested in Joe Burrow. It's a little steep, uh, the touchdowns. Okay. 165, right? A little steep on that. I just don't believe in this Philly secondary either. I think they run lost, and this is quite a challenge coming in with this receiving core. Um, yeah, I have nothing really more to add. I'm a big Jalen Hurts fan, and I, I just – there's something – you're right. There's something weird about the team. Like, a guy like that shouldn't be regressing. He's too no. smart. He's been, he's been, played at the best colleges, played at the best level. Like, a guy like that regressing, to me, screams there's something in the coaching staff mm. and him that is just not working out. So, um, yeah, I can't I can't get to the window on that. Corbin will go over a same-game parlay in that one. Um, Falcons and Buccaneers – Darn it, our cash cow on Baker Mayfield over one and a half touchdowns has come to an end. Or has it? Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, no Evans, no Godwin. Can you go back to it, Corbin, at, at plus 130? Or does these lack of weapons terrify you? I think he could I think he could go over. Am I gonna go back to it? No. I mean I, I I'm we'll get to it in the receiving props more, but yeah, I, I think it's I feel like he's going to have to be throwing the ball. I feel like they're going to be down. I'm more interested in Cousins this week. So Yeah, what do you like about Cousins? Well, I, I've got him in an alt play coming up, but I like him over his uh, 244 passing as well. The only problem is I think there could be a blowout here because just who is Baker really throwing to? His big game of the year, Cousins, was against them when he threw for 500 plus. Um, this is He's had a rough couple of weeks, Cousins, and I feel like this is just one of those get-right spots where it's just the perfect situation. And even if they're up, I could see them still letting him throw the ball because just to get him in rhythm and build up his confidence again from the last time he slaughtered them. So, uh, Jim, what's your take on Falcons and Buccaneers? My my stat is if you're looking at, at uh, touchdown pass parlays, Kirk Cousins has thrown a touchdown in 62 out of his last 64 games. That's pretty mm-hmm. amazing. That's that's like that's Hall of Fame uh, type of streak right there. Uh, what do you think about Baker and Kirk Cousins? I don't think anything changes as far as the two touchdowns go. What you telling me they're going to become a power running team <laughs> with Bucky <laughs> Irving out? <laughs> this is prime overreaction territory where it's oh no, the Bucks are done. The Bucks are this. The Bucks are that. They have players on that team that can catch the ball. So if they have players that can catch the ball, Baker's going to continue to throw it. So I think this is a discount steal. I will be playing this probably with my own money. I love Baker this. Mayfield over one and a half touchdowns at plus 130. Why did we have it. plus 130 on Baker all season? There's going to be some nice receiving props in this game. I can't uh, <laughs> wait for this game to go. <laughs> yeah, so. this is one of, that's one of my favorite betting games of the week is Tampa and Atlanta. All right, let's move to uh, – uh, Cardinals, the return of Tua, mm. Cardinals, Dolphins. Um, I, I, Corbin, I'm sure we'll talk a little bit more about the receivers for the Dolphins. Do you have any takes on the quarterbacks? We don't even have like passing yards for Tua. Mm, I, I don't. It's one of those. I feel like I, I think he's going to come back and he's going to look pretty good. Quite honestly, we'll get to it in the receivers, but. I feel like they've already factored in that he's going to have a good game. The numbers are all kind of expecting him to hit the ground running yeah. and being exactly back that you're not like, I love, I always talk about it. I love getting these players at low totals when they come back from injuries. And I, I don't see any low totals on tour. It's as if, as if he's played every week so far. Yeah. Okay. So. Um, Jim, you got anything on Kyler? Uh, no, I'm, I'm interested in two his attempts or completions. Oh, I think, okay. I think if they're yeah. big, it's going to be a chain and whoever else they got running the ball. Yeah. Those protect to a, why would you put him at risk his first game back? Yeah. At the time of recording this, we don't have those out. So, yeah. um, all right. Uh, I'll be sh- waiting for that. Yeah. Shout out to everyone in the chat that uh, gets uh, upset that we don't put this up earlier. Um, <laughs> <laughs> sorry. We're, sorry. We're trying to wait for injury reports. I like this, but I don't know what it costs. There you go, guys. <laughs> yeah. So this is what you get. Now we're recording early, and now the damn props aren't up. Uh, <laughs> uh, Can't win. Geno Smith and Josh Allen. Um, the only game with a maybe a touch of weather in there, but I always think people overreact to the weather big time. Uh, the reason is because if it's raining, it's also raining on the defense, Jim. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> little little known fact. Uh, what do you think about these passing props here for Bills and Seahawks? I I just I want to attack the run game. 
Okay. Uh, I want nothing to do with the passing props in this game. Corbin? Weirdly enough, I agree with Jim. Uh, oh, I, I right. think both teams are going to be running the ball here. So. Saints and Chargers, uh, Herbert Rattler. I, I, I almost like the Herbert under just because the Saints' rush defense is so horrendous. Mm-hmm. Uh, the last three games, they are averaging 210 yards per game on the ground, giving up. Like, if you're like Justin Herbert, like, Take the day off, man. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we don't we don't need you to throw for that much. So weirdly, I kind of like Herbert under just because I think this is a massive, massive running day. Uh, Spencer Rattler is only at one seventy nine. Corbin, you like either of these guys? See, you actually kind of just interested me in the Herbert. I was looking at ob- obviously everyone goes to look at the rushing props for the Chargers, and like the numbers are astronomically high still, and it's like like. Everyone is expecting the Chargers to run the ball here, but I feel like the, what is it, 202 passing yards? That's still like a reasonable level that that's a way that you can almost attack the rushing side of it, but in a different way that necessar- not necessarily the books have factored in. I quite like that, but I don't want anything to do with Rattler. No. You're saying by, by, by going under? Yes, under, yes, under. yeah. Herbert to go under because I'm expecting them to run the ball, but I can't take any of the rushing props because they're all quite high is what I'm I got you. I got trying you. to say. Uh, Chiefs and the Raiders, Jim. Uh, Gardner Minshew, Patrick Mahomes. Patrick Mahomes is another guy that's been dropped. Uh, the only I, I'm in one league that's got deep rosters. He's rostered in that. But Patrick Mahomes is on the waiver wire. I have... I have Baker Mayfield and Dak Prescott, and I don't, I don't want to drop either of them for Patrick Mahomes. What no. a world we live in that Patrick Mahomes isn't even rostered in fantasy leagues. Wild. Uh, what do you want to do with these quarterback props? Anything? I want to take both players to throw an interception. Mahomes is. That's where I would be looking team. at You're this right. point. I, I right. can't, I can't ignore what's going on with Mahomes at this point. Uh, I don't think we really can. It's not a phase. I think it's just this offense. He's every week. He talks about trying to do too much. There is a lot of drama behind this game with the whole Kermit, the frog thing and smoking cigars in the locker room after they beat him, And, and now supposedly we're going to get the pissed off Mahomes. Well, the aggressive pissed off Mahomes this year has thrown the ball to the other team. Every so game. This is going to get hit in every single every game. game. Um, Gardner Minshew, hit. he's good for two. <laughs> okay. Um, here's the question. Do we have anybody? Is there a chance that Desmond Ritter gets in if Minshew has a bad game or are they? No, they're stuck with Minshew for this game. Desmond right? Ritter was, yeah. Desmond Ritter was sobbing in a press conference yes. that he just got signed to a team. There's a guy who was starting for the Falcons. Now he's in tears that mm-hmm. he made the roster for the Raiders. So, uh, if, so- if, if we're going to get Minshew the whole game, and we're going to get Mahomes trying to make a statement. I think you could play both of these guys. You split a unit on both of them. You get plus money on one side. If you hit both, you're thrilled. Yeah. Corbin, you like either of these guys? No, I can't. I can't. I can't do it. I don't want anything. <laughs> well, let's go to two guys oh, that geez. you do that you do have interest in, and that's the Bo Nix, Bryce Young. 157 is the passing yards. <laughs> Crazy. That that's a half for Jordan Love. Like, that's like the first half total. Uh, that's what Rashad well, Bateman had <laughs> by himself. Just, all right, Corbin Bonix, Bryce. I, I I will say this. Yeah, I'm pretty interested in Bonix over 201. This Panthers defense can't stop mm-hmm. any anything. And like, if you're looking at Bonix, shaky. He's 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 played okay. He's played some tough defenses, but like, what a great time to like give him the ultimate confidence. Like, here, Bo, light it up against Carolina. Like, let's like, I don't know. There's, I feel like there's something about that. Bo Nix is going to have a really nice game. Like, this just screams Sean Payton builds up the the confidence in him. Um, <clears throat> at plus one forty, I kind of like the over one and a half touchdown passes. Corbin, am I crazy? You think I'm crazy? Yeah, yeah. Just they're gonna they're gonna be up so much. They're just gonna protect him. They're just gonna be running the ball. I I, I but how not, are they gonna be up so much by Bo Nix? By still running through them. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I money might, might have a good game, but I, I, I don't I don't want to take him to go over any of these totals, and I certainly don't want anything with Bryce Young. I don't even know if they're gonna trust him to throw the ball at all. Even if they're down, they might just keep just running it, even if they're down. <laughs> just what's the point? <laughs> 
All right. That's, <laughs> that's I got to agree with you. What's, what's the point? <laughs> I'm going to jump in real quick. I got to agree with Andy on this. Bo Nix has thrown for two touchdowns this year, and he's playing the Panthers now. So if he can do it against any other team, <laughs> plus 140, I think he can do it against the Panthers. If he's going to do it two, three times a year, this is one of the teams that he's going to do it against. Uh, Bears and the Commanders, uh, we don't know the Commanders uh, quarterback situation. It's probably going to be r- right up against the the, the the clock there, game time. So, but uh, You could talk me into Caleb Williams over 231 and a half. He's definitely got his confidence. He settled in in the offense. This is a Commanders secondary that's not very good. They they On paper, they look great because they were playing the aforementioned Panthers last week. Um, I probably won't bet it, but that seems a little low against the Commanders. Little, little bit low. Corbin, you want anything with uh, Caleb? I see. I I don't feel like you can do anything in this game until you know who's quarterback for the Commanders. It's going to change so much on both sides of the ball for both teams. It like changes the game scripts completely for me. So okay. yeah, I, I I can't I can't touch anything in this game until I know who's that quarterback. Can I give the Commanders an actual compliment? This is a Washington team that hasn't deserved a compliment in thirty years. Go for nice, uh, nice signing to pick up Marcus Mariota as your backup mm. quarterback. Competent backup behind Jane Daniels. How many teams in the NFL have completely botched their backup quarterback situation? <laughs> your, your, <laughs> team, your team, <laughs> your team, Jim. Yeah, yeah. I w- I- <laughs> the, the Colts. We went out and got Flacco, who's better than the starter. Uh, so I, uh, I will say, if uh, Mario is playing, I could, I could quite easily be tempted into some overs. I watched the game quite closely last week. I thought he had a good game when he came in. I was he's a competent. Flat- quarterback yeah. I, I reckon if he if he does plays i think we could see some low totals on him and i i could see some good over potential it's kind of hard to say because there's no numbers and no idea but it's definitely one i will look at when it comes out so uh what's cowboys the, yeah Jim. What's the longest pass for, for caleb against his secondary uh let's see longest completion oh, is going i to wanted be to bring this up 35 against Washington. and a half with the playmakers that he's got i think that i'd say it's lines right you think it's a little low or high? What do you guys think? About right. It's about right. About right. It, it, yeah. It's slightly high for me. But I just okay. think with, the, with DJ Moore and Cole Komet, we've seen him kind of go off over the middle. That I want to start looking at Daniels' as longest pass going forward. Uh, Sunday night. You Cowboys. mean Williams' longest pass? Williams. Williams. Sorry, thank yeah. you, Corbin. Uh, Cowboys and 49ers, Purdy and Prescott. Corbin, you want anything with these guys? <sighs> Again, not really. Um, okay. It's kind of hard because Cowboys have looked so bad this year, but and they're away from home. We know that Dak doesn't do well away from home normally. Maybe Dak to throw an interception. Don't know what that price is, but that's that's probably the only quarterback related prop that I could think of. So. Jim, I think he could again take both of them. Both you know, Purdy throw. without his weapons has been having to do a lot more. He's been turning the ball over. It happens. It happens when you lose all your weapons. I mean, Juwan um, Jennings is officially out. He yeah. Also, I got notification. He's ruled out. So, Ayuk out. You're right. Covered start. They get a little bare there. Yeah. So. It's, it's, it, they're going to start forcing the ball. And hey, like Corbin said, taking Dak to throw an interception is always a yeah. profitable venture. All right. Uh, let's move on to rushing props real quick. Just want to let you guys know. Uh, let's see. We got our NFL play. Uh, we were seven and two the last three weeks in NFL plays. So go ahead and grab the week eight pat looking to make it four straight profitable weeks in NFL plays. If you have not joined the discord, go ahead and do that. A lot of good free plays, a lot of good discussion. Uh, someone reached out on YouTube, and we're going to do a consultation call on Monday. Uh, that's uh, something that we off that we offer. So, if you're interested in uh, taking the business to the next level, your bankroll is your business, and we can help out. So, uh, I offer any kind of consultation calls uh, if you guys are interested. So, uh, leave me a comment down in the comment section if you're interested in that. Uh, no charge for the. Uh, no charge for the call, obviously. So uh, this week uh, we're four and two plus three point four units, and uh, looking to have a really really big weekend. Let's move on to the uh, rushing props here, Jim. We will start with uh, Titans and Lions. Uh, I like that Tony Pollard under fifty eight and a half. That seems pretty ambitious. Corbin, you're smiling. You agree? Yes, yes. I already mentioned it. I think they're going to have huge issues running the ball. I think the Lions are going to be up two three four scores quite honestly i think it's going to be so easy for them 
I, wow. I just I, I don't see I don't see I don't see the game script helping Pollard. I don't even if, even if they're ahead, I don't see him going over this total. I just everything just leads to an under on Pollard for me, especially at Jim, this number. Give me the Detroit running game all week and twice on Sunday. Both of them, as in literally like take both of them. Uh, I know Montgomery has he's coming back from being a little tweaked. I thought it was interesting they lined the Gibbs line high. I think that's pretty on par with what we're thinking here is that Montgomery's not going to get the lion's share of the carries. Uh, these guys should run through the Titans like a hot knife through butter and give me the under on Jared Goff. Yeah. I don't think he's going to have to run at all. No. At all. No. They're going to pound the ball. The receivers are going to be wide open. They're not going to generate pressure where he's got to take off and we could get kneel downs at the end of the game. Do we dare go back to it, guys? Do we dare? Go, do we dare? I don't want to. Do, I don't, we we were we're one and zero oh in those. I don't know if you go back to the Kirk Cousins same game parlay. I think you just ride off into the sunset with the epic call. <laughs> I kind of want to look it up just to see what the price would be. Uh, Ravens and Browns. Uh, I don't trust this Nick Chubb line. Come on, forty-eight and a half against one of the best running. I don't know, Corbin. No, no, I was on Chubb last week against a way easier matchup, and he, he got the volume of carries that I was expecting, but the yards just wasn't there. I didn't get to watch the game, so I don't know if it was a case of his speed not being there or like what part of it, but having 11 carries and only getting 20-something yards, I don't see it suddenly how we get a better I, rush defense and I wait, like over double the total. I, just... I watched some of his plays. He He's predictably not <laughs> like mm-hmm. I, I I will just say this. I don't think he's ever going to be the what, what he was before the injury um, because what he was before the injury was one of the best running backs in the league. He's just not, doesn't have that same explosion. That being said, like by the time he got to the line of scrimmage, the defense was already <laughs> ready to make a tackle. So yeah. it was kind of a combination. And I think this is just a nightmare matchup uh, for him. So yeah. Uh, it, it was to answer your question, like Corbin, it was a little bit of both. I'm not sure yeah. a healthy Nick Chubb would have been able to do a whole lot, mm-hmm. like with with the the blocking from last week, but um, it just kind of sets up for an under this week, in my opinion. I will say quickly, uh, I did just look up the the golf to have under half a yard rushing and to go over one and a half attempts is only plus two fifty compared. Oh, to they're the, on to us! Oh, <laughs> compared to the plus seven hundred or whatever, yeah, six seven hundred yeah. we had on the cousins. So, Jim, you like any rushing props? No, I think all the numbers are. If anything, I would take the under on Chubb. Um, but other than that, I think all the numbers are right where they need to be. Uh, Packers and Jags. So we just don't know, I guess, what's going on with uh, the Jag- Jags uh, running backs here, Corbin. Anything you want, want to do with these guys that are listed? No, no. Yeah. All the titles are kind of in the right place. I, I, I've I, been quite liking the love uh, rushing yards, but again, I don't think this game is competitive, so I don't think he's going to need to do anything. And then I can't, I can't even take a, a running back against us at the minute this week, so... Nothing. Um, we'll move to the Colts and the Texans. Jonathan Taylor's back. Joe Mixon, man, seventy-seven and a half. This is this again is just kind of leading to, leading me to believe that CJ Stroud's not going to have a massive massive week when yeah. they're when they're already putting Mixon at seventy-seven and a half. Jim, do you like any of these these rushing numbers? No, rushing wise, this game's a total pass for me. Even rushing receiving, I I couldn't get behind anything. Corbin. I quite like the mix in that 77 and a half. Like you look at his stats this year. So he had 159 in the opener versus the Colts. I think we could quite easily see, uh, this is one I may look to ladder up and go hundred plus. Uh, with, he only had a 13 longest rush in that game as well, which I love the fact that he can get to this kind of number without having a long carry. His other two starts, he's had 102 and 115. No Nico Collins. You we mentioned that Stroud's been having some issues. I think I think Mixon could easily have another hundred plus rushing game. So, uh, Jets and the Patriots. I I like Brees Hall, but uh, Jim, I'm going to take a page out of your book. I like the hundred and eight and a half uh, rushing and receiving. Um, I, I I I thought he looked great, um, and I think maybe the Devontae Adams may have helped him of all people uh, more than anything. Um, it kind of seemed like they got away from Braylon Allen. A little bit more, and I thought we saw just the we saw, we saw flashes of how great he can be. The last two weeks, he's gone over 108 and a half rushing plus receiving, but he's done it 
he's flipped it both ways. One week was a big receiving. The other week was a big rushing. I just think he's a great all around player. Um, so I would be interested in the over 108 and a half rushing plus receiving. Uh, Jim, what do you think about running backs in this one? You just finally realize what half the world doesn't realize about Hall is you cannot take one or the other. You mm. have to not only predict if he's going to have a good game, but then you need to predict <laughs> what it's going to be. Yeah, it's so it's really, really hard to do. Um, to me, you always take him rushing and receiving. I've been burned on taking one or the other before, unless they're going to give you some stupid low total. Like if it, you know, five, ca- four catches for 20 yards, like, yes, I'm going to play that. Um, I am actually interested in Ramondre Stevenson in this spot. These Jets, man, they just struggle against the run, and the linebackers are not getting it done, and we're not able to shed the blocks. I know New England's offensive line is that good, but 50 yards rushing? That seems way low. Yeah. Way low for a power running back in New England. It's going to be chilly and breezy. Uh, give me Stevenson to rush over 50 against our team. I don't I don't think they can stop the run in this game very well. Corbin, you like anything running backs in this one? Nothing in this game. Avoiding Eagles, both. Eagles and uh, the Bengals. To me, these numbers seem about – I think they're all pretty accurate. Actually, the only one I might like a little bit more is Burrow over 11 and a half. Uh, he's not afraid to take off and run, and against Philly, this game could be a shootout. I could see some. I could see a couple of rush attempts from him, but uh, I don't think I'm going to get to the window on anything, Jim. No, nothing. Corbin? I think it, it's lined very well. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's really sharp. Oh, I said ah. it. <laughs> <laughs> Corbin, any value? No, no, not rushing. I'm only interested in receiving. I think it's going to be a shootout. Uh, Falcons and the Buccaneers, they don't even have rushing props <laughs> for the Buccaneers yet. It's uh, – Bijan Robinson and Tyler Algier Baker, 19 and a half. That's an that's an interesting one. If 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 he if if Baker doesn't see guys getting open, he will absolutely take off and run. Um Jim, do you want any rushing props? Uh I would uh, the Robinson under. I think under 65, it's not the way you attack Tampa. It's just Truth. not like yeah. okay, Baltimore, they did okay. <laughs> It's Baltimore. Yeah. It's a totally yeah. different type of running game. This is more, you know, uh, I formation zone outside reads. It, Baltimore is just dynamic. Um, I think that you can throw on this buck secondary. And I think that you could see a cousin's night where he's going to Drake London and Kyle Pitts and everything. And, and we still have Vita Vey and side stopping the run. So I'll take an under Corbin. I have nothing on that game. All right. Other than the cousins. Um, I this 19 and a half on Baker's very, very uh intriguing to me. I'm looking at his numbers right now 22, he, 29, and 42. The last three games, does he have numbers. a does he have a longest rush? I feel like when Baker takes off, he always goes for it's not like he's rushing three or four times. It normally is uh, yeah, uh, kind of like one 10 and a half. He's gone over this Ooh. easily the last three games. I like that as opposed to the 19 and a half. You're right, yeah, he's second and good. 10, he takes mm-hmm. off and gets the first yep. down. I like that one. That 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 may make the card. That that one really really may make the card. Good call on that one. All right, let's move on, and we are going to go to the Cardinals and the Dolphins. Corbin, you like any of these guys? Again, I I don't because I I think I uh, it's so you like I the Dolphins. Why you like playing the receivers? On yeah, the you yeah. Better read on that one. Okay, yeah. Jim Cardinals Dolphins. I'm not going to play it, but I would very gladly take Achain and Mostert each because Cardinals are pretty if, bad. If Miami's up, they are not going to put two at <laughs> risk. What are the carries? The rush attempts. Let's look at rush attempts. All right. Uh, so your rush attempts in the uh, Dolphins got a chain at 12 and a half and most are to eight and a half. Uh, most, that, most are to eight and a half is pretty. That sounds like. Lot, if it's no. one of those fourth quarter, we're just going to run the ball the whole time. We're up three scores. We're getting out healthy. You don't think I don't they think they're going to be up three scores. Yeah, I mean, I mean, the last couple of games that he started, he's had eleven and nineteen. Oh, okay. So at that's, plus money, at, at, even yeah, that's a great look. That's a great look. I like that. I one. just think we're going to see the running game if even if they're up by say they're up by ten. 
<laughs> yeah. Whatever they can do to limit to his exposure, they have to do it. They could be up by one and not wanting uh, yeah. to, uh, to drop back. You know? All right, Bill's in the Seahawks. Corbin, you like any of these guys? Oh, this one I can go on. Uh, I quite like the Ray Davis over 24 and a half. I'm not. I'm going to be honest. I don't know a whole lot about him, but the he's had a uh, 41 and 97 the last two weeks. I am worried that Cook will come back and take his uh, take his snaps, or maybe not have the amount of garbage time at the end. Because I, I watched some of the highlights. He had a, a few carries towards the end of the last game, but at this total, it's kind of interesting to me. Uh, also, kind of like uh, Kenneth Walker over his total had 69 last week. We know that the Bills are better versus the pass than the rush. No uh, Metcalf this week. I, I think it could be a Kenneth Walker running kind of show. So they're the two that I was looking at this game. Yeah, Ray Davis is pretty interesting because, uh, like, if you're Buffalo, you got to be like, okay, he showed us something the last couple of weeks. Like, we can't exactly. just – we're just not going to, like – shelve him away and never see hear from him again and take away some care, some uh wear and tear from james cook so i like where you're headed with that one jimmy like any of these running backs i agree with uh corbin on kenneth walker i think he easily goes over the 64 and a half in seattle yeah at home it yeah. just it screams that kind of day no dk gotta lean on the running game more bills are not good against the run yeah uh, james cook rushing and receiving I am going to look at this. I'm not going to bet it this week. This is the first time that we're going to have Amari Cooper, James Cook, and Shakir on the field at the same time. So yeah. I want to see what this offense kind of looks like with all these guys uh, before I do anything as far as James Cook. Uh, Corbin, you mentioned that these numbers were just like kind of crazy. But yeah. They yeah. <laughs> Dobbins, 76 and a half. Even Vidal's 20 and a half. Yeah. Uh, I would even go back to Spencer Rattler at 22 and a half. That guy just takes off and runs and gets a big one. So uh, the under, I would look at Alvin Kamara, 53 and a half. That guy's been, is the, they're just like non-existent uh, running game. So uh, what do you think is your favorite one in this one, Corbin? Favorite? Uh, I don't really have a favorite. Probably the Rattler, if I had to pick, just because of what you said, he takes off. So much. I was really looking for the J.K. Dobbins rush attempts, but it's like seventeen and a half. It's just, it's just yeah. a bit high. So, uh, yeah. I mean, I'm looking at at Kamara. The last three games, ten, forty, and twenty six yards rushing. They just cannot get anything going here. Uh, rush attempts <laughs> seventeen and a half. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> uh, they're gonna get J.K. Dobbins hurt. <laughs> they are. They are. At those they are. So, uh, Jim, do you like any of these? Are we sure that Taysom Hill is 100% back? Because if I've, he seen, is, I've, seen, I've seen his props listed everywhere. He, so that tells me he's going to be back. And a half rushing yards. You're telling me with Spencer Rattler, a quarterback, you're not going to have 10 plays designed for Taysom Hill? Wow, that's a lot. Uh, <laughs> let me uh, let me pull up here what, they, what they're saying. Spencer about. Rattler. <laughs> it's, it is Spencer Rattler. I mean, I, this package is just, it's got to be a bigger part of the offense if Taysom Hill is healthy. Uh, so Taysom Hill, uh, Olave is going to return. That'll change everything. Uh, Taysom Hill, yeah, expected to play. That was yesterday. So uh, full participants. So Yeah, so if he's, if he's full and he's back, I mean, he's going to get those goal line draws. Like you said, Kamara, Kamara has not done much. They need a spark uh, in this running game. I know it's against a great Chargers defense, but 14 and a half seems extremely low to me. Chiefs versus oh, the yes. Chiefs versus the Raiders. Yes, Corbin. This is like. my favorite play on the board. Kareem Hunt over 65 and a half rushing. He's gone over in all three games this year. I think the Chiefs are going to be easily ahead. The Raiders rank 23rd versus the run, and every team has easily rushed for 100 plus versus them. And this, this makes... This is a no-brainer for me. I, th as I said, this is my favorite play on the board is Hunt over his rushing. So, I agree. Uh, he looks great. Eye test, he, like, just looks really, really sharp and yeah. really good. There's not a big drop off from him uh, uh, to Pacheco. So, I thought Madison ran the ball really good against the Rams, but this is just a different, uh, a different animal. So, uh, Jim, you like any of these? Uh, it's, I agree with you guys. I have nothing to add. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Nothing. Panthers and Broncos. I feel like Javante Williams is the big, like obvious 
64 and a half, and then something happens and he rushes for like 61 and everyone loses the over. Uh, I like, I, I don't know, man. Uh, Corbin, can you, is Javante too obvious? No, no, it's not too obvious. His, his total still, it's not like it's in like the 70s or the 80s. It's kind of in the right place. I, I've got uh, both Javante and McGlock. McLaughlin? Is that how you McLaughlin. say it? McLaughlin, yeah. I think, I think both of them are going to have a good day, particularly uh, McLaughlin at 18 and a half. I, th- I mean, the Panthers' rush defense sucks. They're going to be playing from ahead. He's over in three of the last four, and the one he didn't was a blowout loss. My main concern is he only got four carries last week, but I, I think I think both of them could go easily over this total. So, In two games that uh, Bryce Young has started, the opposition has rushed for 399 yards in those in like 80 plus carries. So it's just been a complete obliteration. I like that McLaughlin look uh, fourth quarter. If they're up, uh, yeah. Yeah, you, you can see that. So it's one of those, you, we, we talk about live lines every now and then if he's, ha- if he's done nothing the first half, Great like point. the total is just going to come down and down and down. And then suddenly it's going to be like nine, 10 yards. And then if you could get that going into the, like third, fourth quarters, you, you could get some good numbers there. So, Bears and the Commanders, I have nothing. I can't figure these this team's running backs. I know they love Brian Robinson. Um, that'd be the only way I would lean, but against the Bears, no, it's a complete pass for me. Jim? Uh, DeAndre Swift rushing and receiving. Oh, yeah. Uh, sure. With this Commander secondary, it could most certainly be one of those games where we see more receiving than rushing. For Swift. Okay. Uh, looks See like we're the at number here. is 81 and a half. Good I like number. it. Yeah, good I number. think that's a good number at 81 and a half. I would have him more in the 90s to 100 against this team. If we think that it's Mariota and the Bears end up being up, he's going to get more touches in the run game. And if we get to third down, he's just a great, great check down, get you 10, 12 yards back. Corbin, you like any of these guys? Again, I can't touch this game until I know who's quarterback. So. Cowboys in the 49ers. I, I've I've I, I've so been let down by Rico Dowdle. I was like, no, he's gonna take the, no. take the job and and run with it and be great. He's been terrible. This whole Cowboys team is just awful. Uh, <laughs> they 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 just, they just suck. I want nothing to do with them. That being said, the 49ers are so banged up, I cannot figure them out. Um, so I will happily pass on this game, Corbin. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you nailed it. I have an alt play coming up, so with one. Okay, so I'll, I'll leave it. Jim, I'm out. All right, let's take a look <laughs> at the receiving props. Then we'll do sack props. We'll do an alt, uh, an alt game, or I'm sorry, an alt line parlay, and then the same game parlay. If you guys haven't hit the like button, don't forget. If you don't have a hot take on the game, just type the word host in the <laughs> comment section. Appreciate all you guys, and don't forget to go grab. The uh, NFL Week 8 Pack, 7-2, and two, last three weeks in NFL plays. And uh, we've got our best bets that are up there. So let's take a look at receiving props here. Titans and Lions, Jim. <laughs> Gibbs, 20 yards. I can most certainly see Gibbs getting 20 yards. He just gets the screen game. Every, you'll have like this, this outlier week where Montgomery will have three receptions. And go for whatever that that number just seems super low on. If you're saying he's getting four receptions, yeah. I know it's plus money, but even if he gets three, I think he goes over that number. That number seems way low to me. Give me Gibbs at twenty over twenty and a half. I'll take Sam Laporta under three and a half receptions. Uh, Corbin, you, let, you may be one hundred percent right. The Lions just could be up, and this is just a David Montgomery, Jameer Gibbs yeah. type of game. Uh, not only does Sam Laporta not have three not have four catches combined in the last two weeks. He doesn't even have four targets in the last couple games. It's wow. awful. It's awful. Sam Laporta under his receptions. What but, do you think is wrong with him, Andy? We, we, I know you've mentioned it most weeks. Is it, is it him? Is it just golf? Is it just the running? Like what, what, what do you think it is? When you, when you have so many weapons like that on that team, somebody's left out. Like, I mean, th- 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 think about it. You have David Montgomery and Jameer Gibbs who would easily start a- alone by themselves on most of the teams in the NFL. Then you got a Monroe St. Brown who would be a number one ride receiver on pretty much, you know, uh, all yeah. the teams. And then you got, well, I could be wrong. I'm, I'm saying that James and uh, Jameson Williams is suspended because he couldn't stay off the juice 
Uh, so, <laughs> um, but like, it, it's just a, it's an embarrassment of riches that the lions have put together. Like how, how many teams would have a tight end like Laporta and he's like their fifth option. Like Laporta would be the best receiver on a lot, on a lot of teams mm -hmm. right now. So I think it's just like when you're, when you're going like, well, what do we do with him? Ah, he'll block. <laughs> like, like, so like, cause you're not, you're not making a monitor St. Brown block. You're not making Gibbs line up next to the tackle. So I think it's just a, a function of so many weapons. And um, mm -hmm. that being said, that pretty much guarantees a five catch 80 yard one touch. I was going to say, coming, it's coming, it's, 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 it'll come at some point. Yeah. Yeah. So Corbin, do you, you want to bet any of these? Uh, no, no. Okay. Um, Ravens and the Browns. Uh, Hmm. I don't know what to make with Jameis there, but I, like you said, you're going to air it out. <laughs> so you think somebody's going over? Is it Joku? I don't know. I, I, I don't know. Cedric Tillman. I don't, it's a, it's I, a, it's a wait and see. We see it so many weeks. We'll, yeah, we'll get the, okay. one of my plays, like the Colts. Like we talk about, uh, I'm sure someone else will probably mention it, but like we have Downs coming up who has a great relationship with Flacco and looks amazing. Mm -hmm. Then suddenly Richardson and he's, barely getting targeted it's like you you see it you just you can't take any information that we've had from the browns before and use it like it's just you don't know if he's going to throw it to more or to judy or to and joke you just you can't you just can't work it out pre-game so all right i'm with you uh, jim do you like any of these these numbers are extremely low Okay. I am I'm very high on the Browns in this game to make this a game i don't think they're going to get throttled it's just baltimore's due for Look, they're just coming off that huge W. I mean, this is just a letdown spot to me. You get a backup quarterback, an injured Nick Chubb. I think the Browns are going to be more successful on offense than people think. I'll take Njoku over the 57 and even sprinkle in Jerry Judy. We haven't seen him and Jameis together at all. Like, they're probably not even throwing each to each other in practice very much. But <laughs> I like to look at the second or third receivers when the backup comes in. And I think that would be Elijah Moore. So okay. we got Njoku and Moore. I think those are two really low numbers. And who cares if Jameis throws an interception? It just means he's going to be down seven points and has to throw again. <laughs> so <laughs> just let it keep going. Uh, I like the overs on the, the Browns receivers. Jim, All if right. you were going to take the Browns receiver, surely you're. Would you not prefer just taking the Jameis? Like his over. Sense? Yeah, instead of trying to work out which one of these receivers are going to go over, would you not just rather take the passing total for him, or do you? Um, not prefer... necessarily, because uh, certain situations, I just think that the fifty-seven on Njoku is playable by itself, and I think that the more could happen as well. If those guys get to ninety yards, I don't think that generally is going to equate to him going over. I think it's going to have to be through those two players, unless who else? Jerry Judy gets a hundred and what does that make it? 120 <laughs> yards we need from Jerry Judy remaining. So um, I right get now. what you're saying as far yeah. as taking the Jameis over, but if the game script gets out of control, you never know. I think the big okay. plays are coming from those two. Uh, Packers and Jags, Corbin. Can you uh, like we love Jordan Love, but it's tough to figure out. You can't out. pick, you can't <laughs> pick. It's like, <laughs> like I look at these and I'm like, <laughs> like I always go to Jaden Reed, but even his numbers are a bit all over the place this year. It's just we have so many options that you just got to take Love probably, probably on the passing touchdowns or the yards, quite honestly. Uh, yeah, well, Jim, what do you think? I have no idea in this game. I really don't. Love it. I have no idea. I would be looking <laughs> at Evan Ingram, but that pass defense is so good. Uh, Colts and Texas. Yeah, Josh Downs under 38 and a half. He's mm -hmm. been awful with Anthony Richardson. There. He's been terrible. Um, we talked about him last week. He had one catch for three yards. A catch for three yards. I, it's he's, Richardson is not progressing. He's regressing. Um, so I, it, it's an under on downs at 38 and a half. You can even look at his receptions and go under. Yeah, it's three and well. a half on his receptions. I prefer his receptions to its yards this week. Okay. I don't, I, don't know, I don't know where they've got three and a half from. Yeah, that seems really high. I really because like because they're, they're looking at averages and they're, they're, it's that you get the Flacco numbers that really have him have a job. But he just mm. – you're right. Him and Flacco – same page, uh, him and Richardson, not even in the same library. So, um, <laughs> <That was good. laughs> so I like that one. Um, I don't trust take Dell 
in the slightest. Uh, that being said, I'm not fading him against this Colts defense. So, yeah, it's downs under. I think that's the best play in receiving. Uh, Jets and the Patriots. Uh, Demario Doug. Shout out to Demario Douglas for just murdering everybody's. Uh, receiving prop plays where it's supposed to play. Oh, I'm sick. But don't worry, I'll start. Yeah. <laughs> so your bets are now live, and then I'll decide that I'm I'm sick. Um, Corbin? Do no, no, back? no. Don't, do not come no. to me with the All Jets right. ever again. Jim? Jim, what do you think? You're going to hate me for having plays in this game, aren't you, Corbin? Yes, um, yes. Give me Hunter Henry against our banged up, no safeties okay. that haven't played all season. He has real. I, I was all over Henry when they played Jacksonville, the bad secondary, and went over pretty easy. So I think this is Hunter Henry again. Obviously, he's got a rapport with Drake May. Well, you've said it before, too, Andy. Even with the injuries, the strength of the Jets' defense is on the outside. Mm -hmm. It's not to running backs and to tight ends. And we, we lock down number one receivers. That's what our defense does. So I will very gladly take the tight end to go over the middle at 35. His receptions, if they're under four, we have four and a half or three and a half. Uh, let's see here. We'll find that in a minute. So we're looking for Hunter Henry, three and a half plus one. Love the three and a half. Absolutely love the three and a half of plus money. I think uh, we, we get scorched by tight ends. Jim, I'm coming back to you with uh, Eagles and Bengals because Corbin's same game parlay as the receivers. I'll mm. let him talk about that then. Uh, what do you think about these guys? Uh, let's go over to our totals, please. Okay. Yards. I think the ball is going to get thrown around. Uh, it's going to have to. I mean, Barkley's going to get his work. We know that. We know that they're going to, the Bengals are going to try to run the ball with <laughs> trade Chase Brown. They're going to try. But at some point, the passing happens. I have never been able to figure out the Bengals statistically in their passing game. If I pick T. Higgins, I'm wrong. If I pick Chase, I'm wrong. So I'm out as far as that goes. Other than that, A.J. Brown, if you think that he's going to make that one big play, it seems like that's coming. I think that number at 80 might be a little bit high for this game. I expect Hurts to struggle a little bit. I don't think he makes the big play. I, I'd be interested in A.J. under 79 and a half. Yeah, I like A.J. Brown over. Ooh, Bengals just give, the Bengals just give up big plays in the secondary. It seems like the kind of guy that will catch two long jump balls. Um, the actually, actually, the one thing that could kill an over on AJ Brown is a pass interference on one of those long. We got beat mm -hmm. bad on Alec Pierce. Yep. We had him to go over his yards when he just torched the the guy guarding him, and in, he was wide open for an eighty yard touchdown. The guy just reach out, <laughs> grabs him, and yanks him down, and we don't get credit for the pass because it goes down as a pass interference. But, um, before but, we move on, there's, I just want to mention you slightly touched on the AJ Brown longest reception over twenty seven and a half. He, yeah, he has sure. long, he has longs of 41, 40, yeah, and sixty seven this year. Uh, Absolutely. He's just, He's so hard to stop. Like he's so powerful. Bengal secondary. I don't see who stops him. Quite honestly, so nobody. All right, this one That's is a polarizing game for receivers, Buccaneers and the Falcons. Jim, we so we're looking at K. Dotton. We're looking at Jalen uh, McMillan. I got to be honest. This Rashad White at twenty and a half. Only twenty and a half on Rashad White. What? What are we doing? Hmm? He's going to be one of their number one options in the passing game uh that's that's where i'm going what do you think i agree that's for i like that better than the yacht number to me yeah. it's Kate, it's paid on never shot by we, me and eddie we, we obviously you guys all know we had a play on baker mayfield in that game for the two touchdowns so we're watching it and texting it and as soon as the injury happens to goblin what do we say it's it's on and white on and white time <laughs> yeah it. um the 20 and a half seems criminally low yeah you know, especially with the injury to his backup. What's that? <laughs> he, had, he had 71 on six receptions last week. Out of the back. Time play. <laughs> Sign me up. <laughs> 20 and a half receiving, I'm in. Kate Otten, 44 and a half, I'm in. Uh, McMillan, not so much. I'm not going to be looking to go there until he shows that he can do something. What's the receptions totals in this game? Uh, let's take a look at the white three and a half receptions at Drake London. I have at five and a half. See, that doesn't even, that doesn't even add. If Rashad white catches four passes, he's going over 20 and a half. Yeah. Cause one of those passes is going to be a 12 yard 
like mm-hmm. screen or something. So he only has to average five yards a pass. Yeah, and he does that. He does it. it all the time. Um, so that the K dot and four and a half. I mean, where's the volume gonna go? I yeah, actually Austin, I, Austin had eight receptions last week. Yeah, I, I actually for, for receptions, I actually like the McMillan three and a half. He can't get one a quarter. Mm. Um, I mean, he had what do you have eight targets last week? Gets a full week of practice with a lot Baker. of targets. That's a t- that's a ton yeah. of targets. So, yeah. um, and I I don't know. I mean, are the Falcons gonna like? Oh, we got to take away Jalen McMillan. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> They're throwing up the the plans on the whiteboards right now, Andy. You They're cannot let Jalen McMillan beat us. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, that's I I like Rashad White over twenty and a half. I think if you just for just trying to keep it really mm-hmm. simple, God, that one's that one's a good one. So. Um, Tyler Algier has been catching at least one pass out of the backfield. I will throw that out at minus 220. I don't know where this started, but <laughs> he can catch all of a sudden. So, uh, Cardinals and the Dolphins. All right, Corbin, the floor is yours. Oh, it, it's annoying because I, I went st- the f- first play I looked at this week was the Waddle, and I, I love it still at four and a half. I love his yards. I, I prefer Waddle to. Tyreek Hill just because of the the lower totals but they kind of feel in the right place also like they're kind of already expecting them both to have a good game I may look to like alt uh, Waddle's receptions and yards together through Fandle always just does the better price when you're trying to do those kind of things but longest reception for Waddle is probably I'm gonna have to probably play it just just for myself so okay uh, Jim, do you like any of the receiving props? I mean, the yard. Uh, the, would you say that the yards are accurate across the board for the Dolphins, factoring them to a return? Uh, for the Dolphins, yes. Like they just reset the book and set it back to what they they did before Tua got put out. Yes. So, I think that's a bit of a whim. Uh, they're guessing. I do think they luck out that they're playing the Cardinals, and I think these numbers go mm. over. I like okay. what Corbin was saying about the receptions. I agree. Um, I think the fourth quarter is going to be the running game, but they're going to get theirs before against this uh, Cardinals defense. Yeah, I have regretted not fading Marvin Harrison after he had that monster. He had that 130-yard mm. two-touchdown game against the Rams. And then, then he had, he followed up with 64 yards against Detroit, but since then 45, 36, zero, he gets hurt in 21. I don't know. This is just, it hasn't clicked yet uh, for them on that team. So we're gonna look at that. Bills and the Seahawks. Yeah, no, no DK Metcalf. We always joke about like, well, you can never figure it out if it's Lockett or Metcalf. Okay, no Metcalf, Corbin. Does that mean it's Lockett here or what? Uh, not for me. I I I think if anything, that might actually hurt Lockett because they're gonna just target him uh i think they're also i already mentioned it i think kenneth walker's gonna have a running game i don't know how much the seahawks are gonna be throwing it um yeah. i kind of like there's i have two plays in this game for similar reasons i kind of like the keon coleman over two and a half receptions and 30 and a half yards they both seem okay. like quite low totals i know the seahawks pass defense isn't like isn't bad he's gone over in uh three of the last four and he's coming off that great game where he had seven targets four receptions and 125 yards i really think cooper coming is going to help the other receivers blossom it because i feel like cooper's the one they're going to look for straight away he's going to be the the main guy they look for and it just gives so much less pressure and more space to the others uh shakir over three and a half receptions is another one that i'm looking at he's over in four of the last five so i think uh coleman and shakir receptions are probably the ones i'm most looking at on this board jim well like i said I, i'm gonna i'm gonna stay away from this game i want to see what the offense does but if you had to if i had to pick one bet i'm gonna take james cook over 13 and a half receiving that could be two catches he's lined to two catches yeah. i know the new shiny toys are there but Mm. I'll take over reliable at 13 and a half. That's that's gonna be one screenplay. Uh Saints and Chargers, Alave under 49 and a half. I don't trust Spencer Rattler. Uh Alave coming back from injury. There's a there's a chance that Saints could have the ball 24 minutes. Mm. There, there's there's absolutely that possibility where the Chargers just hold the ball the entire game. Uh other than that, I'm not really interested in receiving props. Corbin? No. Jim, 
nothing in this game. Chiefs and Raiders. Corbin, I, I yes. Bowers. No, no, no. I'm going for I'm going for Madison over sixteen and a half. I talked about it oh. last week and it hit really well. So it so if I read you his last three totals, 31, 32, and 23. The Chiefs are gonna be ahead. They're throwing Madison the ball. He's getting at least two or three, if not more, receptions every game. This is such a low total. He had a I, I think he had a long of like that went near this last week. I remember because I, I ended up betting it. I, it's just such a low total. I really love it. They're just throwing it. They don't have the options to throw anyone else the ball. Who are, like Other than Bowers, they don't have anyone else. They're always down. They're going to be down again. <laughs> it's like... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, uh, Bowers is, is amazing, man. 10 catches, 93 yards last week. But you're right about Madison. Like, Three for thirty-one. He had an eighteen-yard catch last week. Yeah. I think this is a pretty good look. That's I, my second I will, favorite play on the board. I, I'll be honest. I'm not penciling in the Chiefs to blow. The Chiefs aren't blowing anybody out mm. these days. They they can't score thirty points, uh, even against the Raiders. Um, so I like the Madison look. I think that's a good one, Jim. What do you think? Uh, stick with that. I have no strong opinions. Panthers and the Broncos. This is just a gigantic game of no thank you. Mm-hmm. Uh, Agreed. <laughs> I would take the under on Cortland Sutton. Uh, I I dropped him in a fantasy league, and somebody went and picked him up, and I was like, "You have all the fun <laughs> with Cortland <laughs> effing uh, Sutton." That guy was a healthy, played the entire game, and had zero catches. Uh, I know it's a great matchup for him, but uh, I don't know. I'm not playing any of these. What do you think, Corbs? No, no, I I, th- I think it's rushing props. I think we've covered it, and the other sections are far better than trying to work out what. Do you have a team we're going to do in the passing game? Nothing right. in the passing game. Bears in the Commanders. Corbin, any of these? Nope. So I, 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 I just can't touch this game until I know the quarterback. So. Jim, same. I think this Cole Komet number is low. I think it's really low. He's, He's becoming recently. a really mainstream target for uh, Caleb Williams. I know we have DJ Moore. He's the sexy one on the outside. But let's not forget about these tight ends. Uh, you know, tight ends were doing nothing the beginning of the season and they've come on over the past few weeks. It seems like when teams start getting cluster injuries and Mm -hmm. you get quarterbacks that they're inaccurate and it gets colder, they start going to the bigger body receivers and that's your tight ends against this Washington secondary three, four catches. That probably clears pretty easy. Yeah. Commanders give up over 40 yards or just right at 40 yards to tight ends every game. So, Uh, all right, let's uh, take a look. Cowboys and 49ers. Again, here's a whole lot of, I mean, seriously, look, all of these guys combined is what 12, 9, 36, 40, 55, and 75. Like, that's like barely 200 yards total worth of receiving <laughs> props that, that they're, somebody's going over. Uh, Corbin, who is it? Uh, none of these. I, I, <laughs> I, I, I just I can't. I can't pick. It's like I don't want to trust either of them. So. All right, Jim. I'm waiting for Ezekiel Elliott's receiving props to drop. Oh, because God. they don't want to give because they don't want to <laughs> give him carries. So if I could get half a reception or a one and a half, I'm dead serious. He's going to get a touch somehow because again, we still don't know what he has on Jerry Jones, but he has something. So that's also something I've looked at live in game. If it goes down to a half a reception, they give him one of these BS dump offs once a game just to make him feel good. He gets how's, one yard and then he goes back to the bench. <laughs> That's what happens. How's your gambling day going? Well, I'm waiting for Ezekiel <laughs> Elliott reception props to drop. Uh, it's got to be one. And one, one, and one and a half if he gets one early, but I'll wait and see. Uh, I'll I, I, I take a sprinkle of Jalen Tolbert, 36 and a half, uh, 87 and 43 in the last couple weeks. So um, I uh, wish I could uh, have him to drop a pass instead. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what, what's what's Tolbert's receptions here? Because if it's two and a half, I think I'm I think I'm interested. Uh, it is three and a half a plus money. Jeez, no. Yeah. All right. Okay, guys, hit the like button. Let's do some same game parlays. Let's do some uh, alt lines, and we'll do sack props, and uh, then we are all done. Corbin, you want to go with uh, your alt play of the week here? 
Yeah, we can. Uh, so we we were just touching on Ezekiel Elliott. Taking, I'm taking him alt under <laughs> 35 and a half yards, <laughs> yards rushing. He is getting absolutely nowhere near this. He hasn't <laughs> he hasn't gone over in he hasn't gone over 20 since week one. Yeah, he's just he's not getting to 35 and a half. Uh, I don't need to explain that. Uh, I'm taking the Lions minus three. Titans are a dumpster fire. Lions have far too much offense. They need to keep winning. The division's red hot. They've just got to keep winning. And um, minus three covers them if they somehow only manage by a field goal. Um, so I'll take that. And then uh, Cousins to throw for 200 plus. He's done it in six straight. I mentioned before I like him at his normal total, which I think was like 244 or something. A great matchup versus the Bucks. He threw for over 500 versus them earlier in the year. I'm going to take all three of those pieces from minus 132. Nice. I like it. I like it. Uh, let's do... I can't, I can't believe they even gave me an alt total on Zeke that high. It's pretty... It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a pretty big one here. Uh, let's do your same game parlay. We're going to the Eagles and the Bengals. What do you think? Yeah, so I kind of liked all these guys at their normal totals, as I mentioned, but this, this just fits really well together we've mentioned so firstly we have a i can't i'll kind of do the first three bits all together so we have higgins four plus receptions chase to have four plus receptions and chase to have 40 plus yards the Eagles' secondary is just not great i think there's real high scoring potential uh from both teams quite honestly i think both defenses are really not good um so higgins had uh four receptions last week but still got eight targets against a Browns good defense. He's uh, cleared four plus receptions in all but one game this year. Chase has cleared four receptions in every game except the one versus the Panthers, where he just wasn't really needed. Uh, he has uh, 40 in all but one game. Again, Eagles secondary, I think he's easily going to get to 40. And then A.J. Brown just to have 40-plus receiving yards. He's had 89, 116, and 119. I think I can't quite remember, but I was talking about his longest reception. I think his longest each game has also cleared this now that I, I'm saying it. So, yeah, yeah, I love all of that. Wrap all of that up for minus 118. So Love it. Love it. Nice same game parlay. Uh, Jim, you want, let's do inside the trenches here. You're going to talk about one game, the Patriots and the Jets here. So a lot going on here. Uh, the return of Hassan Reddick. Now, we've seen this happen a million times where these guys hold out throughout the season. They come back in week seven, week eight. A lot of hype, a lot of buzz, and they fall flat on their face. I pull my hamstring. I, <laughs> whatever. Yeah, I'm not in <laughs> Now shape. I'm out, right? So <laughs> the big acquisition now is on the sideline just taking up money. I want to <laughs> fill you guys in on the situation. The contract that Reddick has signed is a mainly reworked incentive-based contract. It is purely incentives. So they waived his whatever 20 million in fines, whatever it was that he had, but they gave him a short-term contract. That's very incentive based, meaning that it's snaps played and it's sacks. So I think that this man is already shown to be selfish and he's going to still be selfish and want to get his incentives and not really play the game. That makes me worry about the jets run defense. I already said, I like Ramondre Stevenson. I think he goes over. I haven't seen the Excel play from Quinn and Williams at defensive tackle. The Jets have a star pass rusher in Will McDonald, who I believe is second in the league in sacks right now. He's just got ridiculous speed off the edge. He's going to get there on Drake May. Now, on the opposite side, Drake May has made this offensive line better. It is a totally different unit than when Jacoby Brissett was there. And I know we're on third, fourth, fifth string players, but he's getting rid of the ball faster. He's quicker. He's more athletic. So don't be in such a rush to fade this offensive line for the Patriots uh, because I think they're playing way better than they were with Drake May. So a couple things I think I'm looking out for in this game is to see who's going to hold up in the pass rush. And I do believe that the Jets are in trouble on the ground. All right. Uh, there's your Patriots and Jets inside the trenches. And of course, this week now we had the sack department <laughs> went to Corbin's. Now it's back to Jim's <laughs> sack department. Uh, you're going to Hendrickson. Uh, nice price. Minus 120. What do we like? Yeah, it's a good price on half a sack. Uh, I just want one play here. Corbin went three, you know, last week. I couldn't be happier for him. Hopefully you guys tailed those plays. Uh, but now I got some work to do. I got to catch up. <laughs> going to be permanently Corbin sack props. So we're going to go with uh, Hedrickson at minus 120. He is the only pass rusher 
Okay, he is the only pass rusher. I think he's going to get there. We saw the Giants be all over Jalen Hurts last week, and that was without Thibodeau. So that wasn't a full-strength offensive line. That rush over the left tackle, I believe Jordan Mailata is still out, right? So they lost their big left tackle, and Hurts just hasn't looked right. Hendrickson is like that annoying mosquito on the back of your neck. He's just there the whole game. We've seen it in blowouts. We've seen it in games where they blow people out. He gets his stats. So give me Hendrickson just to get a half a sack. I love it. I love it. So, all right. That is going to do it for us today. Thanks, guys, very much uh, for joining us. Don't forget, uh, NFL Week 8 pack that comes with all of our plays, including Monday Night Football and Sunday Night Football. Go ahead and lock those plays in wt.buzz slash al7 and 2 the last three weeks. If you could, hit the like button. If you have not subscribed to the channel, go ahead and do that now. All right. That's going to do it for us, guys. Good luck on your place, and we'll see everyone later. Good luck. See you later.